Come on, let's clap our hands one more time. On this morning, we have a very, very special treat. And being Minister of Music and over the worship and arts, um, I'll have the privilege of overseeing some great people. And I always tell people when they tell me, oh, you do such a great job, you do such a great job. I always tell them it's not me. I have a team behind me. So between the men, between the praise and worship team, between the young adults, um, between the even the children's choir that's coming back real soon. Um, we have a great team. And, and Fresh Visions is really blessed. That's a good place to give it a hand. Good place to give it a hand. But I stand here this morning um, literally to tell y'all how blessed we are to have one of the most amazing and anointed mind ministries and praise dancers literally in the state of Illinois. Not just in the state of Illinois, I'll go further, in the world. I believe we have that great of a group. And I want to put in a plug for you all on this year. Yeah, yeah. On this year. Later on this year, we used to have it years ago, but on this year, we are bringing back the worship and arts explosion in the fall. Can we give that a hand? We're bringing the worship arts explosion back in the fall. And listen, it always features our moms as well as other dancers across the city and the state of Illinois. And I today stand proud and I want us to receive our own and to celebrate them for all of their hard work that they do. Um, please, let's give a warm hand and a great hallelujah clap for our mind ministry of Fresh Visions Community Church. Can we celebrate them? Come on, y'all. Come on, let's celebrate them as they come down. is said and done after we've worshipped after we cried out loud after we've laid prostrate worship is extreme obedience after we've given all God still wants a yes. Some of us he called a long time ago. And yet we're doing what we want to do. We're picking and choosing our yes. But God is saying, all I want is yes. Those who are serious, those who want to say yes to God, just lift your hands right now and just begin to tell the Lord, yes. Be careful, because yes might cost you everything. Say, yes, God, I'll forsake my way for your way, God. Yes, God, the very thing I don't want to do, I'll do it. God is speaking to somebody and he's saying, if I told you what I really need, would you still say yes? yes Ask the person next to you, would you still say yes?
Yes, Lord. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. He said there is more that I require of thee. There is more that I require of thee. He's calling you higher. He says, sing my face. He says, hear my voice. He says, hear my voice. He says, hear my voice. Hear my voice. Hear my voice. The day you hear my voice, heart and not your heart. Thank you, Lord. I'm calling you higher. I'm calling you higher. So much more. So much more. So let your heart and soul say yes. You're gonna tell God yes. Make it personal. Your worship means nothing without a yes. Without obedience, it means nothing. But if you're really gonna tell God yes, come on. Make it personal. Lift your hands. Yes, yes, Lord. Lord. Tell the Lord yes. Soul says yes. Thank you, Lord. My soul, my soul, my soul says yes. My soul says yes. I'll do what you want me to do, Jesus. some relationships, but my soul says yes. I might have to give up some things that I hold dear to me, but my soul says yes. You mean everything to me, Jesus. You're the first and foremost in my life. That's why I can say, I can say yes. I can say
Please continue. Gracious Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your protection, your provision, your word, your spirit, your love. We thank you for each person that has availed themselves to your worship to allow us to share together and experience your presence and your worth and your power to us I ask your continued blessings on every person that's here every person that has agreed to participate in your grace and to serve you 
with what you've given every musician every worshiper every person oh God we give you praise thank you for the evidence of your presence and as we come before you this morning oh God I know you've already sensed our worship. I ask you now in Jesus' name to use me to set me down, that you would rise up, that your words, your truth, your power through your spirit would come forth with effectiveness and the urgency to help us say yes yes to your will yes to your way yes to your word in Jesus name I pray and ask these things amen amen I don't know about you this morning but I, that there's, there's is, has there, is there anybody in here that can attest to the fact that at some point in your life you said yes to God. I was trying to hold it together because um, uh, that display of worship, that song may not mean some what it means to me so now excuse me for a moment while I collect myself <laughs> God is good I, I just want to reflect just 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 quickly here that there was a time I'm just going to be a little transparent here this morning there was a time when I was not saying yes to God and I don't believe I'm by myself but I'm here to at the mic and there was a time I was not saying yes but when I did <laughs> everything changed for the best and not just the better for the best giving honor to God and thanking God for his placement here with you and uh, giving uh, respect and uh, reverence to Pastor Newman and in his absence and Sister Newman and to uh, Reverend Sutton and Elder Harris and you my brothers and sisters everybody that's in place and everybody that's in this place praise God for you and thank God for your presence here thank God for his presence not going to be long this morning um, Anybody glad to be alive? Amen. Amen. And I know, I know, I know. It seems to be meditational this morning. Am I? Are y'all in here with me? It seems to be, you know, just thought provoking about who God is and what He's doing and what He's done and the promises that He's made. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm not. I'm not not excited, but I'm trying to contain the emotion. <laughs> uh, give him thanks, give him praise for those dances, those praise dances in worship. Amen. Amen. And amen. Um, there is a a word from the Lord today. I just wanted to reiterate something here just in case it came to mind as they were yielding themselves to worship in the manner that God has blessed them and gifted them to uh, display. 150 of Psalms says it really well. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellence, his excellent greatness. Praise him 
Are y'all in here with the trumpet? Praise him with the trumpet sound. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. But this is the part I really like because all of that stuff takes the soul, takes the person, takes the spirit, takes that person whom God has gifted. And he says, let everything, anybody in here breathing? Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord the Lord and I'm grateful and thankful that he uses, he allows us to use those instruments. He allows us to use those, those, those strings and those horns and those drums and those bass and those guitars. But, but the thing about it is that without the breath of God, y'all ain't in here with me this morning. Uh, without the breath, without life, without the soul, None of that can happen. I just want to, I just want to turn your attention to, it, it's, it's, it's a little different. It's a little different. I don't know. It just has a different feel this morning. I don't know what that's about. But uh, I want to bring your attention to a particular scripture. We'll, we'll get, let's, let's get to that. I want to bring your attention to a particular scripture. It's a familiar uh, text that can be found in the book of Acts, the third chapter. <clears throat> I'm going to try to walk through the first 10 verses, uh, verses 1 through 10. Um, and let me just, <clears throat> let, me, let me read it in your presence. Um, Acts chapter 3, verses 1. 1 through 10. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. It says, Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms of those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple, asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And just for a short moment, just for a short while this morning, I want to talk just from this thought, y'all, that, that what we have can help. Amen. What we have can help. That, and that's why I believe that confirmational um, ex exhibition in worship this morning is, is so helpful because when you say yes, God gives everything that's needful, everything that's needful, watch this, not only for your salvation, not only for your healing, not only for your direction, and not only for um, correct relationship, but God gives us what we need, watch this now, to carry out his will. And I want to suggest to somebody this morning, there's not much, no, not much, not anything more important than being in the will of God. And so if we're going to say yes to anything, 
it would work best for us to say yes to God's will. Yes to God's way. Yes to God's word. Yes to God's purpose. Yes to God's program. Yes to God's the parental, our father, which heart in heaven. Yes to God's appointment. Um, yes to God's will. I want to suggest to someone, and, and the reason I say, and the reason I say this morning is, it has a different feel. Maybe not with you, but it does with me. Because there's a portion here, and I, can, I, can I say it this way? Te teaching is preaching. I heard a mm hmm in there. And preaching is teaching. And so often we get accustomed to, programmed to the protocol, if you will, of preaching. And we don't want much teaching. Now, that's nothing wrong with the emotionalism of, of the preached word and the emotionalism of worship. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but, but there's also the idea of doctrine, of teaching. And Jesus is, was, and will be the master teacher. And it is in his word, it is in his acts, in the person, and the examples, and the behavior, and the love displayed by Jesus Christ where he taught as he preached. Are y'all in here with me? I'm, I'm simply trying to say his preaching was not just audible. His preaching was not just by the way of God's word. His preaching was not just proclamation, but Jesus taught by his examples, by his living Amen. Can, can I say it this way? It's, 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 it's a good thing uh, for someone to say something. Somebody in here acts like they don't like to hear these words. I love you. It, it's good to hear that. It's good to hear that. But can I tell you something better? And it's not probably as surprising to you. It's not new. It's, it's good to hear it. But what's also good is that when it's experienced, when it is exampled, when there is behavior that uh, accommodates the words. Are y'all in here? Uh, you can say it, somebody can say it, you can hear it, that's good, and it doesn't have to follow up with behavior or application or display of it. A person can display it, apply it, show it, and never say it, that's good too, but it's still not in the complete form. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say something this morning and I'm getting to it, but, but, but it works best when it all comes together as a package and complete. I, I'm simply trying to say that when a person finally comes to grips with the, the, the love of God and the power of God and the presence of God and the purpose of God and the availability of God in their own lives, personally. Uh, there is something that we, can, that, that we can go by and it's called theology. I know we don't like to hear that in the church, especially a lot from the pulpit, but there's, there's a benefit in understanding good theology. And, and so here in the text this morning, there is a, there's a theology as well as, as, as preaching. Uh, it's pregnant with preaching power, but there's a theology here that God wants us to get to know him just a little better. And can I just say it this morning? Th theology, it, it's, it's really, it's, theology is a fancy word for knowing God. Knowing God better and better. Knowing God and experiencing the love of God through Christ in the will of God, he wants us to develop. I, I'm not going to be long. I, I, I'm not going to promise you, but I'm not going to be long. He wants us to develop, and, and, and many of us, whether we think about it or not, all of us possess theology. Are y'all in here? No, it, uh, the prayer is that it's good theology. In, in other words, God makes himself to be known no matter what. He will get our attention. 
But for those that say yes, that have said yes, and the prayer is that if you haven't said yes, it's in the will of God that you say yes. There is a something that follows the yes as it's been displayed. There, there is a higher place. There is a more concentrated place. There is a more committed place. There is a more directive in place, amen, in your life and mine. And so there is, in, in a kin, there is a ministry that follows the saying yes to God's will. And, and, and in the ministry, this theology, we want to develop a theology, are y'all in here, in ministry. I know we don't like to hear that because as we've said yes to God, it's an admission to say, look, I'm ready, I understand, I'm knowing you, and I accept you as God, and I accept the gift of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ, and I understand that once that happens, I am to be committed, submitted, and controlled by your spirit, and I say, yes, I'll do it. And that's when God says, I've called you to serve in your life in some way or another. And whatever that way is, I want someone to know this morning what God has given you, what you have, what we have, can help. It can help. Do you have a theology in ministry? Do you, do you, have you committed to serving God through whatever gift, whatever measure, whatever portion that he has given you? Have you committed, now listen to me, to teaching? Wait a minute, teaching? You know, I know there's a, there's a danger in that word. There's a responsibility in it. There's an integrity in it. But, but teaching is not just exhortation or expository breaking down the word of God through the scriptures. Are y'all in here with me? Won't be long. I'm still not going to promise. But teaching goes along with an evidence of your saying yes by your commitments, by your behavior, by your worship, and by your serving. Let's walk through the text for just a moment here. I want, I want to say this before we go further. I pray that you, it's just a thought, just if you haven't thought about it this way, that you have developed or are developing or are willing to develop a theology in ministry. We're not just say you've heard it before, we're not just saved to sit. Amen. We're not just gifted to get. We're not just appointed for some other's approval. But it's good, it, it would be good, and it would be, if you've done it, that's great, continue to go higher in it. But many people, many people do not think about this theology in ministry. I got saved and I'm good. I got mine, you get yours. But have you committed to serve God by serving people? Have you committed to worship God and teach others in your behavior? Have you committed to living according to the principles, the precepts, and commands of his word and by connecting people to Christ and the church through his love with a heart and the mind of a servant? Are you submitted to the will of God like Peter and John are showing us in the text? Do you, do you, do you share in your belief or do you believe in the inerrancy, in the infallibility, in the authority, in the power of God's word and the divine nature of the Bible? Are you yielded to, once you've accepted Christ, are you yielded to uh, the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit? Are you controlled by the Holy Spirit and then you serve others? Serve others as God 
directs you to serve, enables you to serve in your church, in your family, in your communities, wherever you may be. Are you going to remain faithful to Jesus Christ by connecting uh, people to Christ and the church? Have you committed? Have you considered? Have you submitted to teach people to think and behave biblically. What's the good way to do that? By you doing it. Are you going to continue and be continually devoted personal devotion and development through Jesus Christ? Y'all, y'all excuse me this morning. I, I'm, I'm, I, deliver me from people who feel, give off whew, this, this, this thing as if they already have arrived and they know it all already. And, and there's nothing that you can tell me, nothing that you can teach me, nothing that you can direct me, and nothing that you can enlighten me about. According to the word of God, I'm a seasoned saint. I'm a good teacher. And I, you, nothing I can learn from you. So don't tell me nothing. Y'all excuse me, but deliver me from that attitude of arrogance. A theology, our theology and ministry, and the power of God, listen to this, it's right in the text, brings results. It brings results. Um... As we move forward to walk through this just for a moment, says first verse, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. Uh, God wants us to put what we know about him to use in serving others, right? And one thing we know about God, I pray, is that God's presence and power are still at work it, because of Jesus. God's presence and power can be put to his good use. And I say that with an emphasis because y'all, uh, y'all pray, y'all pray with me and then pray for me too, because it's a deliverance morning for me this morning. Deliver me from those that would suggest <laughs> that, that there is a, uh, uh, I'm, I'm here to be served. I'm here to be viewed upon with the view of prestige. I'm here to be highlighted, listen to me, relative to my ministry. I, I know this is not what some would consider the good, the glad text. Uh, but it is the word of God's principles that I'm trying to get across. I, I'm, I'm lighten up, lighten up, Rev. All right. Ah, there's so many people out there with my ministry. I just say it that way. Let you <laughs> let you discern it the way you will. And the reason I say that is because what happened to Jesus' ministry? It's quiet in here as it should be. What happened to Jesus' ministry? Peter, not Peter, but what Peter said in reverence to faith, on this, I build my church. I am, if I be lifted up. Are y'all in here? I am the one who's sinless. I am the one who died for you. I am the one who is completely sufficient as your savior without sin, without anything that would inhibit me, the, the, me from making a way and justifying you and, and my blood justifies you. It's about my kingdom. It's about my blood. It's about my salvific expression. It's about me. Where am I in your ministry? 
I can just hear him say it. I can just hear him say it. God wants us to put what we know about him to use in serving others. Here's, here, I, want, I want this thought to dominate you this morning. Jesus, God, Jesus works through us. He gets the glory. He gets the credit. The power comes from him and the result is due to his name. Jesus works. We're living in a day and an age where it seems like the authority of God's word is so ch is challenged and everywhere. And, 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 and God has directed, what God has directed uh, in his word is, is being ignored in many cases. To some people, the name of Jesus has no value. Some people feel like the church doesn't seem to care about anyone outside of the walls, the church walls. We, brothers and sisters, need to reiterate, we need to restate, we need to repeat and reply to everyone that Jesus loves, Jesus lives, and Jesus cares, and most definitely Jesus has power. No, he's not dead, yet he lives, he has risen, he is alive, and he sits at the right hand of the Father, and there's still presence here for you and I. Is there anybody in here knows that there is power in the name of Jesus? I said in the name of Jesus. I didn't say at the name of Jesus because the world always is at the name of Jesus and so many. Matter of fact, demons tremble at the name of Jesus. But can I say something, y'all? In the name of Jesus the name of Jesus is directional but in the name of Jesus is relational in the name of Jesus there's power in the name of Jesus there's salvation in the name of Jesus there's healing in the name of Jesus there's direction in the name of Jesus there's ability in the name of Jesus there is power to do mmm here it is. He shows us that he will use us when we allow ourselves to be used by him. Jesus cares and he wants us to care. Jesus in this situation, he, he used a miracle, if you will, a sign, if you will, to get the attention of the people. In Acts, uh, Acts actions often um, present in a way uh, or, or lead to an explanation about what God is doing. Uh, uh, not only, let me say in a different way, uh, guess what is most effective, y'all? Words and deed. Are y'all in here? Words and deed go together. Do you know there's a, such a thing as superficial profession? You can say what you want to say as time dictates what you should say to get what you want in a particular situation and not meant any of it not mean any of it amen he, 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 it goes together y'all deed and word go together so here's here's the case jesus works through his disciples is there anybody in here that's a disciple of Christ? And I, I'm getting in trouble, but I, I you know, there's, there's, there's a, you can say Christian all you want to. Matter of fact, this nation claims to be a Christian nation, but so much of this nation doesn't even believe in Christ. So much of this nation doesn't even go to church on Sunday, yet they claim we're a Christian. There's so much of this nation doesn't even read the Bible. But yet we are a Christian nation. There's a lot that goes on in this nation that does not display. Lighten up, Rev. Lighten up. Superficial profession. We don't want to be a partaker of that, right? So let me say it this way. Um, if you're a disciple, the Bible gives it to those that learner or follower of Christ. The examples that he set, the word that the Bible gives, that he says, but also the expression and the evidence of the fruit of the spirit that he sent when he ascended. Are y'all in here? 
I know it's not a whole lot of preaching, I know, so bear with me. If you got a pencil and paper, it might, might do you well to get it out. <laughs> Jesus works through his disciples. And there's a root word that's important as far as I'm concerned when you talk about disciples because it has to do with the discipline. And there's a discipline by way of behavior. There's a discipline by way of fellowship. There's a discipline by way of obedience and submission and, and, and reverent, reverence to, what, to who Jesus is and what he's done and what he says. So those, those who, 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 have, who have, 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 have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, in effect, are saying, look, look, I, I agree that I'm going to follow your ways of example. Amen. Well, what are some of those ways? Let me put it this way. Um, in the text here, there's a couple of things, and we're going to run through them, and then we're going to go home. Uh, and we're going to go home. Well, we're going to leave here. Amen. I see in the text here that Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. First of all, text lets us know that Jesus will use us. Um, he works through us when we are faithful in prayer. Jesus was able to work through Peter and John because they were men of prayer. They were going to the temple to pray. Now watch this for the third time in the day. It, some of us we doing well to show up once on Wednesday. Amen. But they were going up for the third time at least during the daytime and it was it was three o'clock. Can you imagine having three specific times for prayer every day? Three times a day where we can shut out the world out and, 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 and focus only on God. God will use us, it shows here, when we, we are availing ourselves and faithful in prayer. Not only that, God also works through people who are available and approachable to those who are in need. And that a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Here it is. They, 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 this person, this person who was lame, this person who was dependent on others, this person who couldn't stand up for himself, who couldn't earn a wage for himself, who couldn't move about for himself, he couldn't make a living for himself, he couldn't help his family out in any way. They laid him daily at the entrance of the church. Lord, have mercy. He, 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 was, he was hurting and in need. And watch this. He represents so many people in the world who have been wounded, who are hurting, and who are in need. He was neglected by the world, the people around him. And what's worse, he was neglected by the church, by the people of God. They sat him outside the gate. And it was more than a physical need because he was hurting both inside and out. Not only was he lame, he couldn't walk, he couldn't make a living for himself, he couldn't make a way for himself. The world was tough on him. Life was tough. And the same people, that say, that what's worse is the people who, who professed that they knew God was rejecting him, was neglecting him. The same people who said they knew God acted selfishly and, and, and unconcerned as much as the world did around him. And they would only lay him at the gate. Now watch this. Not really meeting the need. And I'm simply trying to say to somebody this morning, Jesus works through those who really sees the need. Verse 3 who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. People need to see our worship. People need to see our activity. People see, need to see our faithfulness. People need to see us going and being in worship. But that's not limited to the, to the church house. Are y'all in here? Worship? Here I go. Ooh. Why do you come to church on Sunday? I get, I'm getting in trouble now. Can, I, can we talk? Give me a reason. Why do you come to church on Sunday? And I know most people say, well, I come to church on Sunday to worship. 
I come to church on Sunday to praise God. I come to church on Sunday because ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party and the Holy Ghost party don't stop. I come to church to worship on Sunday. That's the emphasis. And I say, nah, God, it's in the will of God. I do believe it's in the will of God that we come to church on Sunday for more worship. Why? Because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday as well, I've been worshiping all along in my life with my co-workers, with my family, in my ways of living, in my habits, in my recreation, in all that I do. I've been worshiping him all week long. And when I come on Sunday we all can worship him concentrated together in unity by the power of the Holy Spirit and we worship him together on Sunday and they say well you doing too much the kids say now that you doing too much you doing too much some of them say you better be glad that I'm there on Sunday (sighs) they were Faithful to worship. Amen. Jesus works through those who really seize the need. Verse 4, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look at us. Kind of gives the impression, I don't know if you ever run into anybody that's been beat down by the world, rejected by the world, talked about, scorned, and just mistreated, and, 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 not, and, and, and felt unusable. And they have a tendency to feel down and look down and not even look you in the eye. Like they're not worthy of that kind of attention. And it's almost like this, this, this beggar, he, he wasn't even looking at him. He's just like looking away like, can you give me some money? And John and Peter say, look at us because we're looking at you. We have not passed you over on our way into the building. We have not failed to see your suffering, your plight, the the condition you're in, and the the, the attitude that you carry about your own worth and and esteem and well-being. We have not dis you off into the distance of our thoughts and care. Look at us. And interestingly enough, he's oh, he looks at them expecting something that he wasn't going to get. He was expecting to get some money. (laughs) The The text says, and he gave heed unto them Verse 5, experience, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give, I give I thee. This is what got me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Not, not in Peter's name, not in John's name, not in social um, uh, um, uh, uh, administration's name, not in material and money, not in silver and gold, not, not, not in prestige, not in education, not in fancy houses or cars, not in, uh, he says, in the name of Jesus, Stand up and walk. I'm simply trying to say Peter and John saw the need and they didn't look away. They didn't overlook. They didn't uh, just just count him out as as, as unusable, as useless. They could have did what everybody else had been doing for years and just walked on by not caring about the real need. For 40 years, it goes on to say, for 40 years since birth, this man has been lame. Why was Peter different? I'm going to tell you why Peter was different. And this ought to be the same reason why we're different from the world. Because he knew God. He, he had a theology uh, in ministry. He had the love of Christ. He had the Holy Spirit. And he was willing to let God work through him. Brothers and sisters, sometimes it's up to us to show somebody that God cares about them. Not only does Jesus work through those Uh, that really see the need, Jesus wants us to know that his presence and power are not found in silver and gold. 
It's not money. It's not material stuff. It's, it's not fancy clothes or gourmet food. It's, 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 it's not big houses, dependency on the government or social services, but it is the power of God. Jesus was born. Jesus ministered. Jesus was crucified. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. And on the third day, he was resurrected and then ascended into heaven. of Jesus is still here. His presence and power is still available to anyone who would believe and receive and deliver me from the theological view that we don't need to say this every Sunday. We don't need to say on the third day he got up, didn't he? Get up, didn't he? Die. He, he, somebody said we don't have to say that every Sunday but can I say something to you? I'm going to say it every time I get a chance. I'm going to say it because it's the center it's the core it's the reason that we do anything we do in the church how are you going to eliminate oh lord help me here this morning although you may have heard it for 40 years every sunday there is a particular sunday could be your son, could be your daughter, could be somebody that's drug addicted, could be somebody that's out in the streets, somebody's hurting, somebody has been pushed aside, the world has been bad to them. It could be on that 41st year, that one day, that one Sunday of that one month of that one week, somebody says, I'm saying yes to your will, yes to your word, yes, you are my savior, yes, I accept, yes, I believe, yes, I want you in my life, yes, I'm a sinner, yes, I can't do it on my own, yes, yes, yes. It took 40 years. Jesus' presence on earth, Jesus' ministry, Proving the power of God, healing people, saving people, letting people who couldn't hear, hear, letting people who couldn't speak, speak, letting people who had bad feet walk. Forty years he came and in the fullness of the time for that man. Forty years. I hope somebody's hearing me this morning. That was the day that he was saved. I'm simply saying Jesus is alive. We're done. I held you too long. The question is, is he alive in you? Can you sing the song, God? Yes, God is real. <laughs> real in my soul. Somebody know it because he has washed and made me heal. <laughs> Yeah, can, can you sing, can you sing that song for, for I can feel him in my soul. I'm, I'm so glad his presence and power is still at work in the world. He's working through those that have submitted to live for him and be used by him. Y'all, and we're done. We are the body of Christ. We are his feet. We are his hands. We are his voice. We are his eyes. We are the body of Christ. We are the look. And we ought to be on the look for the needs of people. But it is in the name of Jesus where we get our power. It's in the name of Jesus. Power and healing are not in material things. Power and healing are in his name. Power and healing are in his name that comes from what the Holy Spirit will do because of that name. His presence and power is still at work. He healed this cripple. The knowledge of God, the love of Christ, the work of the Holy Spirit, he's still present. He still changes people. Watch what happened to this man. Not only was he healed physically, but he also, they noted it was more than physical healing that he needed. Silver and gold have I none, but what I do have. <sighs> the power of God. The knowledge of God, the love of Christ, the work of the Holy Spirit. And this person was changed. He was changed. His whole being was changed. His attitude was changed. His whole life was changed. Jesus lives. Jesus lives. 
let me, let me, let me quit here just on, a, just on a, a slight transparent testimony. As a young man, I was, and it's not about me, but I, maybe this is helpful for somebody. I was, I was athletically competitive, but I was also competitive in other ways. And consequently, as an athlete, uh, we'd have to take and pass a physical exam in order to participate on the team. Every year I would always have to go the extra mile during the physical because the doctors always heard a sound that they didn't like in one of the valves of my heart. And what I'm trying to say is, on the outside, everything seemed to be all right. But something was going on on the inside. Well, that was the invisible physical. But there was also something going on on the invisible spiritual. I had, I'm talking about me, I ain't talking about nobody, I'm talking about me, but I also had a, a personal attitude of righteous, self-righteousness. I, I, I said, look, I'm okay. People would try to say, you need to God, you need to go to church, you need to get your life right. I said, I'm okay, God, me and God, we, I'm okay, I'm not a bad person. I, I, I'm a good person. I, 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 I tried to make it appear like everything was okay. I had a decent job. I had a beautiful family. I had a comfortable home. I had decent transportation. I had clothes on my back. I had a decent reputation in the neighborhood. I, I seemed, it looked like everything was well on the outside, but on the inside, I was missing something. Something was missing in my life. Something that had to do with peace. Something that had to do with settlement. Something that had to do with, with the love of God that I had been missing. And, and somebody, y'all, someone cared enough about me to see that on the outside, I was trying to make it look like all was well. But the look in my eyes and the countenance on my face showed otherwise. What did they do? They offered Christ. I'm simply trying to say, brothers and sisters, we have to offer Christ to those who are hurting, those who are searching, those who are seemingly trying to act on the outside like everything's okay. But if we look like Peter and John intently, if we're searching for the need of someone who's hurting, the Holy Spirit will reveal it. The Holy Spirit will empower us. The Holy Spirit will move us to the point of offering them something that they need. There are those who are hurting, those who are searching, those who need help, those who are asking for help the only way they know how. So I suggest to somebody today, I've held you long enough, that we would continue this development of theology and ministry, that we would submit, that we would avail ourselves in the will of God and give unto others what we have that can help. Amen. Amen? Thank you for your patience. Somebody, I wish you would give God some praise for what he has shown us he can do. His power is real. Jesus lives. He wants to use you and I. Oh, what a privilege. Oh, what joy. And here's the core of it all. I said it once, but I'm going to say it again. Jesus came and he suffered. Showed off his power. Submitted to the Father. Went through a punishing, violent, shameful innocent in his death his love for you and I he did it and he was crucified willingly he knew what he came for he knew what he would have to endure he knew that it wasn't going to be easy but he in obedience to the father he was crucified and gave his spirit to God why because he trusted him he says I know you've told me you will not leave me here you will restore the glory back to me that which I temporarily let go of to come down here for these people and he on the third day y'all missed the shouting cue 
on the third day. He didn't stay in the grave. He got up. Now here it comes with all power. All power. I'm, I'm, I've held you long enough, but all power. Everything that's necessary for your sake and mine, for salvation and, and, and for joy and for healing and for relationship and eternal life. And then uh, he got up, showed forth in proof <laughs> that he is alive. And in the fullness of time, he ascended back to the Father. But that doesn't end there. This is, this is good for us to know. I know I've held you a long time, but, but he sent back. Uh, uh, help that we would need uh, that we would be able to do what he told us to do that we would be able to minister to people that we would be able to carry forth his purpose and his program and his he is the father he is the son and he is the holy ghost that we could be of use by him uh, and I'm glad about it. I know we're done. I'm glad about it. But is there anybody here? Anybody here? Anybody here or, or, or within hearing distance that has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And here is the opportunity to do it if you haven't done it. Here is the idea of extending your theology and ministry first to be empowered because of belief and acceptance. The Bible says that all you have to do, the starting point, the beginning point, and it's the ending point, is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised his son from the grave and you shall be saved and endued and endowed and empowered by the Holy Spirit to continue on while we wait for his return in the will of God in submission to the Holy Spirit and in his will the invitation is there wherever you are right now is the best time doesn't matter how long you've been away don't matter how long you've been putting it off now is the right time the extended the, the, the invitation is extended and if there's anyone that would come surrender give your life to Christ um, I know there are people here that have already done it there may be somebody out there that have, has not done it. And if, if you elect to come later, um, th today, this, this moment, this afternoon, we're here. We're here. There, are, there are representatives here that have a theology of ministry that are willing to give you help meet the need. If there's any question, if there's anything that's needful, and I thank God for this church that has shown forth willingness and obedience and the will of God to help others to come to know Jesus Christ. Amen. So thank you again for your patience. Give God the praise. Give God the glory for what he's done even in this day. Amen. And thank God. Uh, I believe um, there are um, some announcements to come, but before that we want to continue in worship this opportunity to worship in giving. Um, you know the you know the procedure, you know the method. There's give lify, there's checks, there's coming forward to give forth by the ushers who are holding and, and available for you to give. This is worship. And we're grateful and thankful to God. And it's, it's interesting to know that God has blessed us with everything we need. I put emphasis on the need and some some above that, but he says And give a portion, now watch this, of increase that's based on your heart. Amen? Not, not forced, not that you would come forth unwillingly. But he says it's, it's literally crumbs based on what I've given you. Amen? So, so we have this opportunity to worship in that way even now as, uh, as we offer um, up unto God 
our first fruits. You may come or not. Can we give God some praise for what he's done, what he's doing, how he showed forth who he is. Again, we just thank God again for this opportunity to worship and come in this way together, bonded in love by the Holy Spirit. Um, I want to uh, give opportunity for these announcements. Um, if there are announcements to be made, we come at this time. And then we'll move forward with our benediction. Hey man, church, how you doing? Hey man, what a great word by Reverend Tim this morning. What we have can help. What we have can help. We just want to say, uh, give a spe special thanks for everybody that came out doing um, the volunteers and the children that came out doing um, Vacation Bible School. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> had a great time, had a great time. And that's for everybody that assisted and participated uh, Tuesday through Thursday. Um, let's not forget about this week that we're going to have midweek prayer and Bible study. Uh, the adults, we're going to be studying Genesis uh, chapter 42, uh, Wednesday, uh, June the 14th. And um, we're going to do that Zoom at noon. And then also don't forget about evening prayer and Bible study at 6 p.m. Also, and lastly, um, we have the uh, Fresh Visions Community Church Woman to Woman meeting. It's going to be this, sa this next Saturday or this coming up Saturday, uh, June 17th at 1.30 p.m. And those are the announcements for the day. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, again, if we could, if you don't mind, if you're able to stand, we'll be dismissed this afternoon. It's long past this morning, I realize. Um, let's pray. Gracious Father, thank you again just for this opportunity. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the power and the effectiveness of your word. Thank you that you are true and your power is real. I ask you now to continue to bless each person and each family that's represented here tonight. Continue to bless every ministry, every facet of this church. I ask your continued blessings upon the pastor of this church, his wife, his family, those in his care, including this entire congregation, oh God. So we just give you the praise and we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We recognize that you are all-knowing, all-present. Uh, you have all power and you never change, that you are eternal. So as we um, leave one another, for this this time we know we're never out of your presence and so i want to say oh god um, to you and to this wedding congregation that may the grace your grace of, of, of your son jesus christ and may your love oh god and may the fellowship, the ruling, the indwelling, the power 
of the Holy Spirit be with each of your people as we leave this place. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you.